I was dedicated to what I was doing, mm -hmm. which is the art of the animals. And they opened up the, uh, or allowed me to come in the back door. Uh, and I would just walk in like I own the place. I didn't have to show any ID to any police or anything, you know, and they right. have the security they hijack, you know, that. Yeah. And uh, then I would go upstairs to uh, the Avery uh, uh, part where I would do the uh, birds. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I could do animals if I wanted, but I didn't. I wasn't working on animals at the time. Right. And uh, every time I get on the elevator, one of the doctors of whatever they are, they all have their title, like a vicious ethology. And uh, uh, I remember this one guy says he did turtles, and another guy says he did frogs. Okay. And when I was going in the elevator, he says, I understand you do a good job with the birds and everything. And I says, I think I do. And he says, well, uh, uh, how would you like to do turtles for me? <laughs> nice. And the other guy, how would you like to do frogs? Because right. Because I need some frog work. <laughs> so I could have made a business out of it, but could I didn't have. know any better. Right. You know. Of the whole, uh, Badillo, I think was his name. It was a, a Spanish name or Latino, and he really liked what I was doing. He'd come in and watch me draw and hold the bones up and really take measurements and count the fins on a fish and all this stuff. Yeah. And he said, "Boy, I sure enjoy just watching you work. It's unbelievable what you're doing." Yeah. And you've got the drawings. You mm -hmm. see, they're fading away, so we got to photograph them before they fade away completely. Right. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, they were pencil on tracing paper. And like the fish ones, we, or the bird ones we just did last weekend. Yeah. So I need to find, I'm, I'm sure we have the fish ones. I just haven't seen them yet. I haven't either. Yeah. Um, and I know I have, well, anyway. We'll, we'll keep looking. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that's what they allowed me to do. And then I remember going in and I was doing the uh, redhead duck. Mm -hmm. And they would give me the pelts. Okay. See, the taxidermist would have pelts. Right. And you'd have all your feathers laid out. So I'd match the colors, yeah. you know, how they overlapped each other. And all the details about feathers. Then I started doing the hummingbird because I was doing the hummingbird. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they would bring down even the, the skeleton and the little skulls and right. show me how the tongue wraps around and comes and attaches here. Is it right? But it goes under here and through the cavity. And okay, so it comes backwards. I thought it went forward. No, okay, backwards. it comes backwards yeah. and then it comes out. Through the mouth. Through the mouth. Yeah. Wow, interesting. And it's very long. Yeah. Very long. And it's forked. Okay. Um, and really, they're licking things when they do it, like a cat does to bring okay. it in. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was fascinating to me that they made all of this stuff so open to me. I'd go to the drawers and we'd go and say, which part do you want? I want that one or yeah. this one. And uh, they treated me just like another scientist. So then, uh, when the Dolly Barton was happening, uh, I did the same thing. But this was ethology, and that was down in the basement. And they had, I think it was uh, five or six doctors of ethology there at the time. And they says, uh, oh, Jack, how would you like to uh, uh, hold the since you're doing the Dolly Varden, we'll show you a real Dolly Varden. And so they went to their cooler room, which is all jars of fish. Okay. And like formaldehyde or something, some kind of preservative? And so you got a, this big jar with the fish in it. And so they did me a great favor. They took it out, let me hold it, and configure it to my painting. I had okay. the painting on the floor. Yeah. And then I put that same bend on it so I could see, and then I held it back and forth to make it bigger or smaller until it fit. Mm -hmm. It fit perfectly to my painting. 
Okay. Then I knew I had the pins in the right place and everything was in the right place. Right. That's how I knew it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, put it back and thanked him, of course. And, uh, while I was doing that, another little Japanese doctor that was visiting for three months came over. We were grouped around the painting on the floor. And he looks at it. He says, you did this? Yeah. yeah. He says, well, that is the most beautiful Dolly Varden I've ever seen painted, ever. He says, she really got it all in that painting. He says, and Nick, I can, I'm here only for three months, but I'm going to tell you, we've got Dolly Varden's in Japan, because they go from Northern California to the Aleutians to Japan. Okay. That's their circuit. They were all in there. And he says, uh, he told me that, and he says, we have them in Japan. And this, I would recognize that fish anywhere, the way you've got it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I thanked him. You know, we bowed and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I go along nice. with the, sure. the system. Sure, the yeah. yeah. And uh, they, they liked me for it. Anyway, so then they all stood around and talked about it and told me about the fish, so I got a bit of background. And uh, then later when I had them printed up, then I went over there and gave them all a print. Okay. See, I, nice. I like to thank people mm -hmm. uh, for things. And uh, because they went way out of their way for me. Sure. And uh, that was pretty damn nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, that's how we came to get the print. And I made the print exactly the same size as a 16 by 20 canvas. I wanted the image exact. Right. And then I sat there all day with the printers at the printers. I picked my paper and I sat there all day in the uh, reviewing room and they would run off a sample, come to me in the reviewing room, put it on the stand in the wall with all the lights hitting it so they were color adjusted for color. And uh, we'd, I'd put my painting right there and say, you have to match the painting. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to take us a long time, but that's what I'm going for. I want this to be as good as that. Right. And we spent all day, and it was back and forth. Back, turn up a little more <coughs> yellow, turn down a little green. Take it back again. That's changing the big printing machine, which is huge. Right. At my whim. Yeah. To make to it. To make it right. Yeah. And we spent all day, and finally we got it at the end. And I says, now you got it. I can't tell one from the other when I'm standing back. Right. You, you really got it. Now, these may fade, but then so may that. Mm -hmm. But right now, we've got it running, and they did, they ran them off, and that's what we got. Where were those? I have them. At your house? Mm -hmm. Okay. As long as you got them. Yeah, I have them. Uh, um, yeah, um, and that was offset printing lithography, right? Lithograph. Okay. Yeah, which is different than digital. Right, because nowadays, because this is before, this was in the 80s. Yeah. So this is before digital was a thing. now, yeah. just like uh, horse buggy whips. Okay. Are collectibles now. Why? Because they're no longer made. Yeah. This type of printing is no longer done. Yeah. There may be specialists throughout the world that keep doing it just because, mm -hmm. you know, for history. Right. But generally, it isn't done, and what you've got are collectibles just for that reason. Yeah. Forget the painting. Yeah. But the painting is superior, I mean, the print is superior to any print that you can have yeah. for matching the actual artwork. Some of these are so far off in color of the masterpieces. Right. If you had three, five books, mm -hmm. and you they would all be them different. All, they're all different colors. Yeah. And mine are, here's the picture of the painting, here's a picture of the print. Right. It's right off. Right on. And if it ever stops, it's because the new printer that makes a new book mm -hmm. doesn't watch it. Right. See. But that's... Pretty good. Yeah. 
So tell me about the Dolly Varden, so the fish, because in doing the painting, you learn about the, the fish yeah. and the birds and the animals whenever you do those kind of things, and, and you really study. So like this guy, you say he's, he's migrating back to the spawning grounds, but he's, he hasn't gotten there, and, and then physical changes happen to him? What? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll explain the whole sequence here of what I'm thinking is happening. Or what I intended. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah you. Yeah. Can can it hear me? It can hear you. Because I have a very light voice. These days. It can hear. Yeah. With age, it's going away. I know. No, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. The Dolly Varden is coming upstream. He's going against the stream. The mm -hmm. stream is letting out to the ocean, past him, and he's going up because he's going to. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, spawning. Spawn. It's going to spawn. And right now, to my eye, that's not sharp. Was that sharp to you? Well, it, no, I mean, it was uh, okay. so that the camera could see it. Um, okay. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Now. Okay. Okay. In between his tail and his body, Mm -hmm. There is a couple of, uh, in that, by the tail, there's two V's going up, inverted V's, going up, coming down, going up, coming down. In that, there are distant Dolly Vardens coming upstream, but you can't see them because you're looking oh, through the back water. back in here. Yeah. yeah. You're looking through the water, okay. and then the water softens them. They're there, but through the thickness of the water and the brightness of the sun on the water, right. it kind of fuzzes them. Okay. So you need a good print mm -hmm. for the, the actual painting, but I don't see it here. Okay. Uh, maybe it is there and I can't see it, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. Okay, now he's coming upstream and he is now fully formed as the Dolly Varden. His red is redder, and the red dots on him have a blue circle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know it's a Dolly Varden. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he is just starting to get a jutting under jaw. A jaw. Hold on. Hold that thought for a second. Okay, so that's better than the other one. It's not really, it's not great color picture we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. I'll be right there oh. about it. So this is a social commentary that if we start here and allow time to go, it starts to improve or disprove by uh, getting polluted and time passes some more and the pollution only gets worse, and then finally you've got the end result in which everything, life of any kind, including human, will die. So we have to do something about it. That's what pollution is telling us if we listen to it, if we understand what the artist is trying to say. And the, the commentary is a perfect one for America today. They know it, but they're not doing it. And this reinforces what we know to be truth. I don't lie in my paintings. I only put truth. And if you can go by truth, then you're going to end up at the end. That's it. Yeah. So I, I and it still applies today, because this is oh, this yeah. painting was done in 1966. Yeah. And this is 2018, and uh, you things are getting worse and worse. Exactly, yeah. and people We're complain more and more. Sure. But the young people are not doing anything about it, and they're the ones that should, and that's the parents teaching the right. kids, oh, don't worry about it, it won't happen in your lifetime. 